Section One of Poems by Currer, Ellis, and Acton Bell. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Libby Gone. Pilot's Wife's Dream by Charlotte Bronte. I've quenched my lamp. I struck it in that start which every limb convulsed. I heard it fall, the crash blent with my sleep. I saw depart its light even as I woke on yonder wall. Over against my bed there shone a gleam, strange, faint, and mingling also with my dream. It sank, and I am wrapped in utter gloom. How far is night advanced, and when will day retinge the dusk and livid air with bloom, and fill this void with warm, creative ray? Would I could sleep till, clear and red, morning shall on the mountain tops be spread. I'll call my women, but to break their sleep because my own is broken were unjust. They've wrought all day, and well-earned slumbers steep their labors in forgetfulness, I trust. Let me my feverish watch with patience bear, thankful that none with me its suffering share. Yet, oh, for light! One ray would tranquilize my nerves, my pulses, more than effort can. I'll draw my curtain, and consult the skies. These trembling stars at dead of night look wan, wild, restless, strange, yet cannot be more drear than this my couch, shared by a nameless fear. All black, one great cloud drawn from east to west conceals the heavens, but there are lights below. Torches burn in Jerusalem, and cast on yonder stony mount a lurid glow. I see men stationed there, and gleaming spears. A sound, too, from afar invades my ears. Dull, measured strokes of axe and hammer ring from street to street, not loud, but through the night distinctly heard, and some strange spectral thing is now appeared, and fixed against the light of pale lamps, defined upon that sky, it stands up like a column, straight and high. I see it all. I know the dusky sign, a cross on Calvary, which Jews uprear while Romans watch, and when the dawn shall shine, Pilate, to judge the victim, will appear, pass sentence, yield him up to crucify and on that cross the spotless Christ must die. Dreams, then, are true, for thus my vision ran. Surely some oracle has been with me. The gods have chosen me to reveal their plan, to warn an unjust judge of destiny. I, slumbering, heard and saw, awake, I know, Christ's coming death and Pilate's life of woe. I do not weep for Pilate, who could prove regret for him whose cold and crushing sway no prayer can soften, no appeal can move? Who tramples hearts as others trample clay, yet with a faltering and uncertain tread that might stir up reprisal in the dead? Forced to sit by his side and see his deeds, forced to behold that visage hour by hour, in whose gaunt lines the abhorrent gazer reads a triple lust of gold and blood and power, a soul whom motives fierce yet abject urge, Rome's servile slave, and Judah's tyrant scourge. How can I love or mourn or pity him? I who so long my fettered hands have wrung, I who for grief have wept my eyesight dim, because while life for me was bright and young, he robbed my youth, he quenched my life's fair ray, he crushed my mind and did my freedom slay. And at this hour, although I be his wife, he has no more of tenderness from me than any other wretch of guilty life, less, for I know his household privacy. I see him as he is, without a screen, and by the gods my soul abhors his mien. Has he not sought my presence, died in blood, innocent, righteous blood, shed shamelessly? And have I not his red salute withstood? I, 
when as erst he plunged all Galilee in dark bereavement, in affliction sore, mingling their very offerings with their gore. Then came he, in his eyes a serpent smile, upon his lips some false endearing word, and through the streets of Salem clanged the while his slaughtering, hacking, sacrilegious sword, and I, to see a man cause men such woe, trembled with ire I did not fear to show. And now the envious Jewish priests have brought Jesus, whom they in mockery call their king, to have by this grim power their vengeance wrought. By this mean reptile, innocent to sting, oh, could I but the purpose doom avert, and shield the blameless head from cruel hurt. Accessible to Pilate's heart is fear, omens will shake his soul like autumn leaf, could he this night's appalling vision hear, this just man's bonds were loosened, his life were safe, unless that bitter priesthood should prevail, and make even terror to their malice quail. Yet, if I tell the dream, but let me pause. What dream? Erewhile the characters were clear, graved on my brain, at once some unknown cause has dimmed and raised the thoughts which now appear like a vague remnant of some bypassed scene, not what will be, but what long since has been. I suffered many things. I heard foretold a dreadful doom for Pilate, lingering woes in far barbarian climes, where mountain cold built up a solitude of trackless snows, there he and grisly wolves prowled side by side. There he lived famished. There, methought, he died. But not of hunger, nor by malady. I saw the snow around him stained with gore. I said I had no tears for such as he. And lo, my cheek is wet, mine eyes run o'er. I weep for mortal suffering, mortal guilt. I weep the impious deed the blood self-spilt. More I recall not. Yet the vision spread into a world remote, an age to come, and still the illumined name of Jesus shed a light, a clearness through the unfolding gloom, and still I saw that sign which now I see, that cross on yonder brow of Calvary. What is this Hebrew Christ, to me unknown his lineage, doctrine, mission, Yet how clear is godlike goodness in his actions shown! How straight and stainless is his life's career! The ray of deity that rests on him, in my eyes, makes Olympian glory dim. The world advances. Greek or Roman rite suffices not the inquiring mind to stay. The searching soul demands a purer light, to guide it on its upward, onward way. Ashamed of sculptured gods, religion turns to where the unseen Jehovah's altar burns. Our faith is rotten, all our rites defiled, our temples sullied. And methinks this man, with his new ordinance, so wise and mild, is come, even as he says, the chaff to fan and sever from the wheat. But will his faith survive the terrors of tomorrow's death? I feel a firmer trust, a higher hope rise in my soul. It dawns with dawning day. Lo, on the temple's roof, on Moriah's slope, appears at length that clear and crimson ray, which I so wished for when shut in by night. O oh, opening skies, I hail, I bless, poor light. Part clouds and shadows, glorious sun appear, part mental gloom. Come insight from on high. Dusk dawn in heaven still strives with daylight clear. The longing soul doth still uncertain sigh. Oh, to behold the truth, that sun divine! How doth my bosom pant, my spirit pine! This day time travails with a mighty birth. This day truth stops from heaven and visits earth. Ere night descends, I shall more surely know what guide to follow, in what path to go. I wait in hope, I wait in solemn fear, the oracle of God, the sole, true God, to hear. 
End of section one.